Okay, I'm not going to. I'm going to have to cut you off that. there. But I, 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 I was very pleased that you were able to come, and I really appreciate it. We had to skip Ames. Um, Ames, Kurt Wright's amazing patriot, um, served in the military. Uh, which, which branch were the Marines? Navy. Or Navy? God bless you. My brother was a naval aviator. Flew P.P. P. 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 Orion's dim. Were you a pilot, or were you working in the, uh, another area? Were you a pilot? No, I, I was a, actually a more attractive Oh. At the Combat Information Center at the time over there, Dalton Tompkins. Oh. But, uh, my friend over there. We were going to. He was driving boats. There, there's there's so Mac with. Starting the war. <laughs> Well, he's been fabulous. He's been really a big patriot, very big supporter. Pardon? His 
ship was the commander's command to send us up the river to draw fire. Oh. Paul commands very well, though. I'm supposed to stay away from the Chinese. Oh, I love it. All right. Well, listen, um, okay, well, Ames, we really appreciate it. Ames has run for governor several times. He has been um, very supportive and is extremely active. Doesn't get much more active on the voter integrity issue than Ames Kurtwright. And he drove all the way up here with uh, Rodney from the Salem area, and we really appreciate it. And we've got people out here like this well, is Rodney, Rodney is an author. Oh, we've yeah. talked to our, we yeah. talked to uh, we talked to Rodney uh, while you were Rodney getting. Rodney uh, knows more about um, Obama than all of us put together. Oh, I'm sure he does. Yeah. We want to hear everything he has to say. I'm I'm going to get to all that, but I just want to like quickly go through and find everybody. That was Macwood, um, and he's a patriot too, and been very active in a lot of stuff, especially trying to clean up Clackamas County. And then we have Brady Deacon. Brady uh, is uh, going to be very become much more active with the Conservative Party, Oregon, and we appreciate that. He's very active in James Buchel's campaign for Attorney General, who up there uh, waving the colors on the overpass with us and honk, getting people to honk at us and really doing a lot of yeoman's work, wonderful stuff. And then uh, uh, back back again, the wonderful Burton Keeble ran to be my, my uh, state rep but was, not, was denied that opportunity but did it very, very well, especially on such limited funds. And old friend there, uh, Margaret Reesvick, very, very active, and um, she's been involved in the conservative movement for quite some time. So, all right, um, now what I'd like to do is, this is my little flag, I would like everybody to please stand, and, uh, and uh, we're going to, Ames, why don't you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay. Uh, Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, Terry, would you like to say a prayer or invocation? Dear Lord, protect us in what we think and what we say, what we hear. Guide us through your light in all of our decisions. Protect our nation. Amen. 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 All right, thank you very much. Uh, okay, we're going to get started. I'm going to do a little presentation on what I understand there to be uh, problems with voter integrity. I have to get my little form up here. So, um, all right, to start out with, we have to, to, to what got me interested in this way back in 2000 when I first ran, got involved in politics and ran for state rep, the seat that Burton just ran for, was um, when they did the recount for, of course, George Bush, and we did what I would call the first tea party, went down to the Pioneer Square. Did anybody else do this with us? Go down to the Pioneer Square and march around and say, uh, Bush won three times, give it up gore, or anything like that. Well, it was lots of fun. Now, all these nice, well-dressed people walking around, probably the, n the best smelling and nicest dressed people walking around the Pioneer Square they'd seen in a long time doing any sort of demonstration. So it was a lot of fun. But I, was, I uh, talked to Bill Witt, who came the closest to winning CD1 back when he ran in the 90s, and um, his campaign staff found two houses, one with, uh, I believe, 300 people registered to vote at the one house, and one with 400 people. And they drove by because they thought this was so curious, and the house was barely big enough for one person, let alone 300 or 400. Okay? So then I did a lot of research, and so then we have to go back to the mid-90s, and, um, and our current um, retread governor, Kitzopper. Kitzopper hired these two guys, and I found out about this information from Rodney and uh, James Loftus, and then did more research in it. They found, uh, they knew that they couldn't fix my theory. A lot of this is my theory, supposition, but if you don't, you don't hypothesize about what you think is happening, you're never gonna figure out what is happening. So keep that in mind. Um, so he, hi he went out and he hired these two brothers um, from India, the programmers from Chicago, I believe, 
to come out here and start this company called Saber Corp in Salem, Oregon to devise and, and create a statewide voter registration database. Because if you don't have control of the entire statewide voter registration database, you can't borrow from Multnomah County to pay Yamhill County and on and on and on. The funny thing about that is how many people here know of a business that you would start and develop a product that has no market? Does that make any sense to anybody? Okay, he did this in, in 1995. Until after George Bush's recount and the, all the hubbub about that, and they developed the Help America Vote Act, or commonly referred to as HAVA, then in that legislation they required every state in the country have a statewide voter registration database. So that gave Sabre Corp an eight-year head start on developing the statewide voter registration database. Okay? So they developed this, this and so when they went and when states were trying to get HAVA compliant, which means they, they got their own database set up, it was much easier for them to do it if they just went to a company that had already been doing it for eight years, Sabre Corp. So Sabre Corp grew exponentially. They moved into Portland, left Salem, and they, should beca they, they became Sabre Corp. They were Sabre Consulting, they became Sabre Corp. Then they got bought by um, Ross Perot's company, EDS. And then EDS got bought by HP. So now they're Hewlett Packard, Sabre, it's kind of, you know, it's all been kind of hodgepodge together. And it's very, very difficult to find out how many states Sabre is in. Do you have any idea, Rodney? You don't have no, okay, mo and, okay, but they're all working together. So you gotta remember, um, and I gotta put these names up here so that we kind of understand the flow of things. So, Sabre Corp, okay, 1995, okay? So then in 2000, Three, you have HAVA, okay? So now they, so Sabre gets the contracts in 2006, contracts for red states that, that go blue, okay? So these states that were her, were were red went blue once they'd hired Saber to so come in and manage their state. Vote, you know. I don't know all of them. There was like, it was either I get them mixed up with dyslexic Wyoming or it or was one of them. I believe Colorado was one of them. I'm thinking Maine might have been, but I'm not sure. They were, but they most of them were red. There might have been some blue states in there, but in any case, Colorado. Yeah, might have been. And so they went, so they went, so they went, so during that election, what happened in that election? 2006. Did we do real well in 2006 with conservatives? No. We had both the presidency, we had everything up until 2006. 2006, they took control of the entire Congress. Okay? So, um, now I'm going to bring into it, we're going to get back to, to, to what happened after 2006. Now I want to talk to you about a connection between E, S, and, oh wait, hello. Where's my, my eraser? This all started during Clinton too, right? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is all, this is all E, S, and S. During Bill and Hillary. Yeah. yeah, and before that, you're right, good point. 1992, 1992, we had um, uh, motor, yeah, but fertile ground. Yeah. we had motor voter in 1992 or 93 actually, 93 under Clinton, okay? So motor voter um, told every DMV office that you gotta register everybody who gets a driver's license. And that doesn't mean you have to ask them if they're citizens, they should just sign it only if they are citizens. And if they're not citizens, then too bad. But that ushered in this huge, huge number of people that they could put into the statewide, I'll just put this, um, I don't know, statewide voter registra registration data base, okay? So they flood, they flood that, okay? And this is what Sabre Corp developed, okay? 
So now they've got all these identities. Well, you know, what's, what's interesting is, is my man comment. Go right ahead. The, the, you, 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 everybody moves within three years, probably even more often than now. And, you know, so you, and you got the illegal aliens that have been registered. And there's no way of tracking any of that. No, no, no. So they've got, a, they've yeah. got a wonderful system because they're not. What happens if you register to vote and you move within the same county? They'll just forward, when you forward, put your forward address, they'll just forward your registration. They're still not going to check your citizenship. They're still not going to check your eligibility. They're still not going to check no to see if you're a dog, a cat, a long dead relative, or an underage child. So, so they've got, so we've got the motor voter turns into the state with a statewide database, just floods it with it. Saber Corp has got, has been working for eight years to devise this wonderful little mechanism, software package to, to manage a statewide database. Then Hava comes on, so that makes, these guys are just like multi-millionaires now. I mean, these guys just sure. went from getting recruited by Kitsopper. So you can see a lot of this started here in Oregon. Oregon is, is the, the petri dish, if you will, for all this election fraud. So they, um, they didn't do too well. They were still fine-tuning it in 2004, um, 2004 election, because it, it, they didn't get it um, actually was it 2004 that they did that, that? It might have been 2004 that they first started with the red states and the blue states and then rolled the whole thing out in 2006 because it was wildly successful in 2006 because they took over all of Congress. All of Congress. Okay? So they took over all of Congress went blue in, uh, in 2006. Okay? So... What I believe happened was, in 2008, um, they real, it was either 2004 or 2006, but in any case, by the time they got to 2008, they had it rocking and rolling. They got Saber Corps paneling it, they've got the ES&S voting machines, um, and they, they rocked it out and they've, they've gotten a lot of it coordinated. But now I have to talk about ES&S. Okay, es &S, is the machines that are in pretty much every state in the country except for my home state of Oklahoma. <laughs> Oklahoma is unique. It only uh, it's unique in a lot of ways, but it only it owns their own heart system. Okay, Oklahoma went a hundred percent Mitt Romney this last election. Not one county um, was a turncoat and then went liberal, went Marxist. Every last one of the counties was red. They own their own system. They have the heart system. It's very much, much, much more um, reliable. It's a safer, and thankfully, Clackamas County has has that one. Yamhill County has it, um, and I believe uh, Marion County, <coughs> Coos County, I mean Curry County might have it, but I'm not sure. But they're the only four counties in the entire state that don't have this ESNS. ESNS used to be Diebold, Diebold machines, oh. and Diebold was exposed as being easy to fix. And so, so here's the deal. If you have an ESNS machine, you have to use a cer certified printer, programmer, and and maintenance. Isn't that interesting? Maintenance. That's maintenance um, company. I guess how many? Um, can anybody guess how many? How many of companies that are certified ESNS printer, programmer, and maintenance companies there are in the, in the state of Oregon? One. That would be correct, Burton. One. Just one. Yeah, that one. Okay? <laughs> so it's real easy. There's not, I uh, hope, all, all they have to do is Saber can coordinate and do the programming to send down to the, the printing company. In this state, its, it's name is Ryder. Um, Serve election services and systems or something like that. And it's out of Bend, Oregon. Bend. Okay. So there's no so, oversight. So there's no, it's all centralized. And just, just like with, um, with the terror cells, you know, you only have one, you know, mastermind. He can just direct each terror cell. One terror cell doesn't know what the other terror cell is doing. You got people up at the top, and they, they're directing Saber, and they're directing Ryder. And they're directing all the county clerk counties, and uh, and the counties are honest, and um, and uh, they they're doing what they're told to do. So 
So it's real simple. They just they and they and they what and how, I but just found this is recent information. I just found out when we were doing James's recount in Washington County, and uh, from I got some other information from another place too, from uh, Harney County. Uh, they apparently um, does anybody know about the Secretary of State project? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I'm gonna erase this. You guys got that? Okay. That started under Clinton again too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. George Soros. Yeah. Yeah. She can it started off with that terrible yeah. guy that was that crypt, that guy that was an invalid, you know, the this uh, uh, here, the uh, poor Kate Brown. Brad, Brad, he, he, oh, um, Bradbury, Bradbury, Bradbury. Yeah, Bradbury. Okay, so was he a Secretary of State um, project? Uh, wait, Secretary of State project. Project. George Soros. Okay. So, Kate Brown is one. Kate Brown is definitely one, and and uh, Bradbury. Okay. So, very okay. So, they went when they switched with Haba. Okay, and um, in 2003, the county clerks were all told you have to go to a scanning one. You can't use those punch card things. I mean, after all those hanging chads, right? So they had to go to a scanning machine. Well, shoot, we have budgets to deal with all this other stuff. Well, if you want to pick E, S, and S, we'll buy the machines for you, counties. Well, guess what? That's why all of the counties went with E, S, and S. Because Secretary of State's like paying for them. And I was just down at Multnomah County for James's recount and found out that three of them, they um, are, were, are being rented by the Secretary of State, the ESNS machines and all, there are like six of them, okay? So, um, so this is all in the little cabal, so it's all the system. They just plug a little thumb drive, you know, USB thumb drive, into the side of the, the little thumb drive, into the side of the, the computer that's sitting there, and uh, they can do what they want. Because here's how it happens. You have these different scanning machines in the elections office, okay? And they put through your paper scanner and they, they count it. And then all of them, all of them take this wire and goes over to this standalone computer. And they have a uh, little printing stuff underneath. And each one of these has a zip drive in it too. And it has printers under there too. And, um, and this person from Ryder, who in Multnomah County, up until this last election, or maybe this one too, I'm not sure, because we kind of put the heat on her pretty badly. Uh, Vicki um, Urban, who used to be the, uh, the county clerk for Multnomah County, so the, from the 19, um, from, I just found out it's like 1988 until 2002. Uh, she, she was really pushing hard, Don told me, McIntyre told me, really pushing hard at the time to get all vote by mail vote by mail okay so she leaves in 2002 and her sales rep the rep that used to handle that, that called on her to print all the ballots for her at Multnomah County elections his name's Tom Ryder well Tom decides to start his business up as the one and only certified elections printing company in Bend Oregon nice little resort area and uh, so she leaves in 2002 guess where she goes to work Who's the first employee that Tom Ryder hired? <laughs> Vicky. So Vicky gets to come in and and uh, program the computers and maintain them if they break down, and so she can go to every county in the state except for the four I mentioned because she works for Ryder and she's a part-time election worker for Secretary of State during the elections too. Isn't this cozy? So she can go in and she can plug in her stuff into there and make the tallies come out whatever way she wants to. I mean, these things are all going through there, and it all looks good, and but we don't know if they're all matching up. But I'll tell you, by the, by the, I found out, you know, when the recount came out perfectly, they now have it set up. I don't believe they did in 2010 because they all the hinky stuff they did when Delia, we were doing Delia's recount. But I do believe they've got it figured out now uh, and they um, um, how to make sure that they actually have exact number of ballots that they're going to 
program into the computer to say. And I think it has something to do with the uh, sorting machine, sorting machine, because your ballot will come in with the, with the barcode, it'll read it and it'll say, that's an R, and it'll give credit for you, so you look up on the computer on the Secretary of State's website and it'll tell you, that's yours, you, you voted in this day, oh great, my vote counted. Well, how do we know your vote counted? Because um, they could be doing something, there's absolutely no security at the drop boxes. Okay? You drop your ballot off at the drop box, and they got a lock on it, okay? And then a guy comes, picks it up, and he has a lock on it. But he has a key to both of them. And they're supposed to come in pa pairs of two. And guy and, picks it up, has a key to the lock box? Oh, yeah, he has a key to the lock box. He has to open up the lock box, put, his, put the ballots in, and lock it. And, and then he relocks the box at the library. And then he heads on back with his partner to um, drop it off at the county election. That's the way it's supposed to work. But I got some news for you, and now I'd like Edmund to come up and, and share his little story with us. Come on up, Edmund. Well, so now, Edmund, you um, were, to be fair, Edmund was in, in a heart system. He's not with an ESS system. He's in Clackamas County. I sent out a call to anybody who lived near a drop site to please go at 8 o'clock on election night and watch them pick up the ballots, the last ballots at 8 o'clock, and, and follow them to the election site. So... Take it away. Can we get up in front of here so people can okay. see you a little bit? Well, so th this and was... And if you want to mark anything or draw anything about that, you're more um, than welcome. Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> so so um, I followed the call. I actually got the email from Terry and uh, Nicole, and I followed the call to, to ARMS. So I uh, went to the Milwaukee Library, which was one of the uh, places where they arranged uh, one of the... One of the one of the drop box. yeah Dropbox uh, places. About what time? Um, I was there a few minutes before eight o'clock, and I sat in my car, and I was watching. Um, nothing was um, particularly exciting there, but Keep going. but then I noticed. I think uh, three boxes, metal boxes, were were put in in a car that pulled up to the. Uh, to the booth. They had a little booth arranged in front of the library. And one more box was carried to another car which was parked um, in the parking lot at a different location. And then the two cars uh, went, uh, drove away. I followed them very closely. Did, wait a minute, before you go further, um, <coughs> the first car that pulled up was a kind of an SUV-ish type thing and, and they pulled up right next to the booth to the or booth, under yeah. the booth? And they uh, unlocked the, the yeah, box and yeah, tell us a little bit more detail and exactly where was this other car parked and when did they enter the picture and did you become aware of them? Well, so the so the first car was, um, I can't remember the make of the car, I, I have more details in the email that I sent out and, and uh, it may even be in this. That's okay, it doesn't matter. But anyway, right. <coughs> anyway, they, they put I think three boxes in the, in the first car which, which pulled up. The booth was arranged on the sidewalk, um, so the car was right in front of the booth, and they, they just put three boxes in the, in the back of the car. And I don't know why they took the fourth box to the other car. Perhaps there wasn't room in the first car, or I don't know. Did you, wait, was the other car parked? I got the impression the other car was parked, kind yes. of like it sneakily just sitting there like they're on a stakeout in, it the, didn't, in the parking lot. Right. It didn't, it, well, it, it was in a, um, in a parking lot kind of maybe 50 feet away from the booth. So someone carried the last box to the car in the in the parking lot. However, the, the two cars left together. So there was nobody sitting in that car. Just somebody from the first car got out of that first car and went and carried one box to another car, got in it and drove it? Or, I, who, or was there I, somebody already in there driving it? Or I, what? I can't be sure if it was a person from the from the first car. It may have been someone who was who was sitting in that in the in that other car. Uh, so, but somebody from the other car didn't get out and walk over to to the guys picking up the boxes, did they? Um, I to to be honest, it's it's hard to tell because you know there are a number of people around, and it was it was hard to it was hard to tell who to follow. <laughs> I had a flip come with me, but I wasn't sure what was worth filming because I wasn't I wasn't acquainted with anybody who was taking part in the in the process. Did it look like two people got out of that car initially? Or did it look like there's only one person in the car? Because they're supposed to go in pairs. Um, I don't know, <laughs> to be honest. 
But when I followed the two cars, I think they noticed me following them. Uh, from Milwaukee, uh, they went on 99E, which is the McLaughlin uh, Boulevard, and I followed them all the way. I tried to do it discreetly, but they, they, they must have figured out that I was following them. And I followed them all the way <coughs> to the... Uh, Did they take like a longer route than you would have taken to go to the elections office? No, they, they take the pretty much the shortest route. But the interesting thing happened when we arrived the, to the elections uh, office. Uh, one of the, it was, first of all, it was crowded. The parking lot was almost full everywhere. All the spots were, were taken. And at that point, one of the cars went one way and the other car went the other way. And I didn't know what to do, which one to follow. There was only one of me. <laughs> I wish I had another person with me or another car. Um, so what I decided to do uh, was, I was I was circling the building, not exactly circling because the, the, the shape of the all the parking lots is more like a U letter, you can't go around. <coughs> But I went around all the all those spaces, and I positively verified that the second car, which was carrying one box, did not stop anywhere there. I, they may have stopped half a mile, stopped half a mile away in the street somewhere where I didn't see them, but they did not. I'm positive they did not stop anywhere in that in that parking lot surrounding the building. Then I found the first car with three boxes parked there, and I and I hung around for a while, and I saw people taking out those boxes and moving them into the building. Did so you see only three boxes or did you see four boxes taken out? I saw only the boxes that were put in originally. The three boxes? The three boxes. I believe it was three. I, I had, <coughs> if you find that the number was different in my email, then no, that's the correct three. number. You said it was three. Unfortunately, yeah. the records from, um, from, uh, from Sherry Hall um, is that, uh, that four arrived from that place at that's, that night. That's what I. That's what I've heard. Uh -huh. That's what I've heard from her. And Sherry was. Does anybody? <coughs> does everybody remember what happened with Sherry Hall and the, the election fraud in in Multnomah in Clackamas County? Yeah, yeah that that girl, the lady, the girl got prosecuted. Yeah. Okay. Not so she she was getting. Does anybody? Put the, Mac, did you? Uh, Mac, wake him up. Okay. There he is. Well, <laughs> okay. Mac, right. did you? Or do you know anybody that was was uh, was really close to that situation? Because was I understand it from John Lee, um, the S secretary, of, the secretary of state's office just smothered her and came in there and tried to make it look like it was all her fault and how terrible that she had such a crush. Mm -hmm. We should call for a recall of her, and so she was really, really under a whole lot of pressure at this time, and she couldn't watch little detail like how many boxes are coming in and all this other stuff. And they have they are in big trouble, Secretary of State, because they don't have control over Mult Clackamas County like they do all right. the ES and S counties mm -hmm. because they have the heart system. That they can print up their new ballots if they want to and it's much more it's less expensive, it's much fairer. As a matter of fact, I understand Bain Capital and Mitt Romney's a big investor in it. So um, they had to move in there and put pressure on her. No, no, no mystery as to why the person who's being prosecuted supposedly is a Republican, right? Right, so, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So they yeah. have to get in there and they have to get in there yeah. that day because they can't fix the whole state. Why? Because they don't have the population in the other parts of the state in order to make sure that they get the tallies that they need. That Saber, Saber Corp spent so much time um, managing and, and figuring out. I mean, they 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 got a they got a they got a wild card with this this <coughs> guy is, is Sherry okay though? Yeah, Sherry came out good. Uh, Sherry was the one that called her and reported her, and that gal that was doing that was what was she doing actually? A current registered Republican, even though she previously was a Democrat. She oh, was she a was and, and, and she used to, to work at, and from what John Lee said, she used to work at Multnomah County. Yes, and okay. years ago, we, uh, I believe, Rodney, is it your recollection that years ago, um, I thought Ruth and we were, when we were testifying to county commissioners, that it was kind of common practice for them to enhance a ballot. It oh, didn't yeah. look like it was a Republican Democrat ballot. They just go on straight Democrat all the way down the line, right. straight Republican. They that was common practice there. So she moved over to Clackamas. She thinks, oh, no problem. I can do that in these. They tried every way they could to slam Sherry Hall. Oh, they and sure she did. 
the truth stood. They can't control Sheriff Hill. They got a real problem with Clackamas County. Clackamas County, they have a positive for them because it's only one of three unionized counties in the state. You've got Multnomah, Clackamas, and Lane County. Lane County is a total can of worms. There he is, Kevin, right? Yep. Good to see you, Kevin. Kevin made it on Fox News. He's going to tell and us all about this stuff. Keep in mind, we got two new commissioners in Clackamas County. I know, hallelujah. Praise Jesus. That, that's, the, you know, two conservative crew candidates. It took Pretty some good. doing to hold their... Hold them in there. So, 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 so we're seeing the whole can of worms, yes. how this whole thing is developing, yes. that, that, that this is all a centralized voter registration. It's there, it starts, the, the election fraud's committed before the election's even started because we've got so many fraudulent people. So what if, from what Edmund saw, Edmund witnessed them um, picking them one of, taking one of the boxes out of the drop box on at 8 o'clock on election night, and, um, and driving to the elections office and then taking off with one of the boxes. But yet it's reported at the county that they got all the boxes, all four of them, but, but he witnessed them taking only three in. Well, so what, is, so what would stop them from taking the ballots? Well, when would the fourth one arrive? We don't know what happened. I, I have to honestly say know. that we don't, we don't know, know what happened to the weird. fourth one. You never saw the other car. The other car just did I never saw it again, but I, ha but I didn't hang around there for, I went for to much the longer. A website where you can see if your ballot got registered. If it's registered, they counted it, right? Well, yeah, but this is what I'm it. saying. What if there's another? I, a lot of this is supposition, hypothesis, <coughs> and stuff like this, based on based on we. I do these recounts to like like stick a pin, pin in the pig and see if he's clear, and um, and see what what bothers them. We found out in 2010 it really bothered them, and they found out again this year that it really bothers them that we would want to um, destroy the eight leftover unused ballots at 8 o'clock on election night. Oh, right. That days. was just too much. Yeah, they spent a whole day um, four fighting, four, three lawyers, actually, um, to fight this. And um, then the corrupt judge, um, liberal, sided, judge. The liberal judge sided with them after James Brilliant. James Brilliant. It, it, it was too confusing. It was too confusing. What it was really meant. I just don't know. leftover and used ballots well after until after the certification. Um, we know that the printing company, I've got to get to the information about the printing company. Oh, God, get a little bit more information. So anyway, my theory, though, real quick with these drop boxes, the possibility that they might be doing this is what if every day, I found out daily for the five days leading up to it, they go every day to pick up the drop boxes. They just go every two days leading before that. And they go every about every hour on um, or very close to it on election day. So what if um, I go with my buddy and we pick up the ballots, we take them to a secondary location, we scan in the barcodes so we know who voted, and we give them credit for it because we want them to not be any the wiser that, yeah, I turn my ballot in there and they count it. And uh, then they, um, and then they, uh, they just duplicate all the ballots. Lisa, Lisa, I'm going to sidetrack her. Go right ahead. We're, Thank kind you, of, we're, we're like little mice running around in circles looking for some fraud that's going on. And yet it's going on all the way across the country in many different ways. And it's like I used to, when I used to fix television or something like that, or whatever, there's many different problems sometimes in fixing the TV. Um, what we've got here is a multitude of problems. And one of the biggest problems I see. Uh, being back at the convention and stuff and watching how things went and how this vote went down. And we've, except that we've, explored, I've ex seen this for three, three elections. Where the, one election for the George W. Bush where the computer shuts down, George W. Bush is like three or four hundred thousand in advance, computer shuts down, George W. Bush, three or four hours later is now three or four hundred thousand. Or Chris Dudley, so or. What we're dealing with here is, is, is a computer manipulation that's going on all the way across the country. Yeah, they didn't have 4,000 show up in Clackamas for, um, what's the name? They um, had more But, but I sat down and had a bet with a guy named John Fun, basically, who was a talk to the back of the Fox News computer in my house. And we, I bet him 500 bucks that basically the Obama would win. 
And really? he said, oh, no, this is not going to happen. I said, the reason it's going to happen is because it's going to be voter fraud beyond your power of comprehension. Yeah, he, he we lose that. this election every time. Because and we're going to continue. A computer to do and you're it. darn right. And, and this is why we have to figure this thing out. The computer is easily manipulated. Mm -hmm. It's easily it's manipulated on a national level. And I think it went across eight, at least roughly eight states that went down. And, every, and I told and you And you know, and every, you know. Yeah, they have, mm -hmm. everywhere we showed Romney showed the ID, we, we got we won. Everywhere we didn't show ID, we lost. Okay. And Romney but, won big in those states. Yeah. And he bear, and, and Obama barely won. This this the bottom line is, is this vote. Any discrepancies should be called out to be moved. Oregon on a state level, yes. Elvers, we need to start over. We need to have ID. And the only way, I'm, I'm with the voter integrity group that reps to uh, True the Vote group. I went to their, been to their conferences. And anyway, uh, which is over in the last one we had was in Texas. And uh, anyway, so we have to have ID nationally across the, across the country. The computers, they're not. We have to count. We need the paper trail in each county, 36 counties in the state. We need a paper trail in every county. And the county people have to count the vote. And we can't got to get SEIU out of our voting system. Period. They are socialist. I have one guy. I got to oh, argue yeah. with a guy. I stayed there, and, uh, and we were arguing back. And he got a military guy, and you know he's SEIU. He works for SEIU, and he's working for the union. And he says, and I said, you know, you, you sound like a socialist. He says, I am a socialist. We have and they're proud of it. By yeah. communists. <laughs> and I says, and I'm not going to call them socialists. Here. I call them communists. We're dealing with communism. There's only five to fifteen percent of the population, by the way. They manipulate the Republicans left, they manipulate the Democrats left. They're good Democrats out there. It's just they've been infiltrated. And the leaders of these socialist operations that we're dealing with, I think Rod would agree with me. We're dealing with communism here, they're about ready to take over our country, and they don't have any problem cheating. Oh, and, right. they they right. and they yeah. always forecast what they're doing a lot of times and with the movies. Yeah. We that, ran, the movies, by the way. You don't remember that movie, that like comedy movie that came out with uh, what's his face and he said, oh, there's a computer yeah. fix to fix the election for him. Well, Rodney's about to do Rodney's going to do some. Anyway, but what was I going to say? Worry about say they're communists and they're going to get back on track. Well, it's going to be really hard, though, Amy, because, um, you know, like right now, the Oregon House is run by Tina Kotek. And they're so proud of her that she's, you know, she's this uh, open lesbian and she's the most powerful woman in the Senate or in the, in the House. And she, Oregon is just, there's no way we're going to get a voter back, ID. Back to basics. This country was found on where the federal government does one thing, and that's war and interstate commerce. Two things are War and interstate commerce. That was it. The, the state's supposed to have power. For you. I ran an ad, okay, on this voter fraud issue. Maybe some of you heard of it. I did. Okay, so we ran 450 of those. Okay, and we ran 450 of those 60 second spots talking about how they steal the vote. My, what do I do? I run a company that I have to market nationally. Okay, um, you know, and so I have to advertise in all the states. We can target areas and make people aware. It's called media. Uh, we have to target and convince people that their vote is being stolen from them. Secretary of State's got big windows. Bill Bradbury reads to thousands of records on voter, voter, uh, voter, voter records. We have to use the media to do this. Get her all of this stuff on a real short script and hit them and hit them and hit them and hit them yeah. on every yeah. station. We did 19 stations, four of them, plus 19 stations. So that had an effect. You remembered it. We run it again, they're going to remember some more. It, 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 yeah, but you have to tell them what is to pressure their, it's just that we don't have any power. They've got it all stacked. It's, you know, I've got, 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 got possible solutions. Now, solution I'm going to tell you what, you what you do, and there's a book that every one of you should read. It has a Tea Party Manifesto by Joseph Ferro. Every one of you should put it to memory. And what we have to do from now on, on because I want to get our youth to do this, is infiltrate their organizations. They right. can't do anything when we're sitting there amongst their groups. You become a Democrat for a while. Go infiltrate the Democrat Party. And infiltrate the Socialist Party. 
down there. Get your ear ring on, or whatever, whatever they wear. Uh, you know, you know, and, 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 and go down there and do, do that. Have and you we do we have to get tattooed? Do it and start getting her no, used to do it too, because then the kinds of are conservative here to do that sort of stuff. I'm done talking. Well, I, I love that. Um, mm -hmm. you guys, I have some questions for you. you. What is that? Carl. So all I'm saying is this stuff's going to be moved because we've got a bigger problem on a national level. That's all. Okay. It's, um, it's computer cheap. We can look at and count and all those kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because, yeah, they'll just... You've got to call it, and you have to speak it out, and you put it on the table. Lisa, I have a question. Go right ahead. Several, several Jump questions. right in. Um, so, did I understand you correctly? The, the Sabre system, the, the one that was uh, created by oh, well, somebody well. that was started by kids, however, is that used across Oregon or is it used across the nation? Nation. Across the nation. So, I, I believe the system was, well, this was the, this was the, uh, the template was started here in Oregon, 1995, they and, you know, because the Sabre Corp, the, 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 the Indian Brothers, I can't pronounce their name, they, um, they devised it. And then they work with this company called Chavez Consulting, which if you're on the Oregon health care plan and you need some help or technical service, they're the one who manage that. And the statewide voter database, statewide voter, the statewide, I'll just say statewide voter database system. I'm just going to put it down. That. There is I don't know. Anyway, system. this this registration database is located in two places. It's located in Salem. And it's located in Baker City of all places. Yeah, Why? Guess who company um, is in Baker City? Richard Chavez's um, uh, uh, Chavez Consulting. Okay, they're the ones who manage that, and so they have something to do with it. So here are the people that I believe that are that are. Um, I think I'm gonna stop recording. Steve, stop recording.